All right, and we are live. We are live. Um, <laughs> it's been a crazy week. It has been a crazy week, uh, both on YouTube, on Twitter, everywhere in between. It has been insane. We're gonna we're gonna say a hi to everybody here in chat as this pops up. Uh, it looks like it's good. <laughs> so many people in chat. There's been a lot of discussion just in the lead up to this stream. A lot of people very passionate. Um, a lot of people saying, don't make me hate this game while trying to convince us why we should love it. Uh, very interesting indeed. But uh, let's see let's see who we got here. Now, this isn't going to go all the way back. There's been so many people. Um, so many people talking about Abby. A lot of weight gainer. That's right. A lot of weight gainer for Abby to be able to keep that mass. There's absolutely no way in hell um, that in the state that they're at, she'd be able to maintain that physique. Just saying. Uh, Blue-eyed Scorpio. Dead eye. Stop trying to force us to think like you. Oh, yeah, I did see some of that in there. I did see some of that in there. Yeah, you need a lot of way. You're going to need a lot of mass builder uh, in the zombie apocalypse in order to do that. Uh, we are going to, it is going to be a little bit of a celebration guys, a little bit of a celebration to see subhuman in the chat with that fuck naughty dog emote. Thank you so much. Subhuman. Uh, a lot of people triggered over this. A lot of people triggered over this. Why weren't you triggered? You know, month and a half ago when I came out with this merch, I don't know why you weren't triggered then. Seems strange. Seems very strange indeed. Um, I see Nissa Al Ghul here. I see Matt Cronin here. Super Tony says, fuck Naughty Dog. A lot of protein shakes to maintain. Yeah, and a lot of working out too. Alex is here. Biggles with the Steph emotes with the fuck Naughty Dog. Broba Fett is here. What's up, guys? We've got 100 feet, 163 people watching already. Holy shit. Uh, we are going to have some more people on, I do think. I wanted to start it off solo, though. I wanted to start it off solo because I have a lot to be thankful for right now uh if you guys remember when we did this stream on uh what was it last sunday i think we were sitting there at like 12 or thirteen thousand subs now we're closing in on 20 we're at 19 7 right around there and i just wanted to say thank you guys um it's been incredible even if i never gain another sub i've done more on youtube than i ever thought i would and that is in such a large part due to each and every single one of you in the chat each and every single one of you that is subscribed, smash the like button, share the video out there. Um, and then, of course, you have those people that are members, that are patrons, that you know just take that next step above and beyond. Um, you know, I'm just really thankful for you guys. It's a celebration for me with, with what has happened with the channel, how well a lot of people have, uh, how well a lot of people have received, how well a lot of people have received the Naughty Dog videos and everything. Um, so it's time to celebrate, but it's time to celebrate you as well, uh, because I really appreciate that you guys are here watching my content, tuning in to fucking see me. Uh, so we, and we've got, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today because people do not stop talking about the last of us part two. Uh, I see a lot of good conversations going in chat between old dead eye, Steve. I'm glad you're here Dead eye Steve. Uh, it's always good to have some different perspectives going on. See dark side droids in the house. Keep it up. Great job. Thank you so much. V-Nex for the win. V-Nex for the win. Well, this is actually the uh, the sweatshirt. This is the sweatshirt. Um, I do have some V-Nex for sale. No V-Nex for the Naughty Dog merch. We do have the sweatshirts. We have the regular shirts. All that good stuff. Shellbag said, don't tell me what to do. Riff Magos is here. Great work, Ryan. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. Pence and Sale for Mexican 100 pesos. Keep it up, bro. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Pensacio. I do really appreciate that, and I will try. Um, I took I took about 48 hours off, honestly, just because uh, just because I was I was pretty spent. I, I've been cranking out. I'm sure you guys have noticed. I've been cranking out the Naughty Dog videos. I had to just kind of uh, take a day to a day to chill. Um, but we've got some more news. I'll be coming with another video, probably released late tonight. Maybe I might wait till early tomorrow, but there's always stuff to talk about. I see Biggles. I see Biggles in the chat says, finish my video. You're singing happy birthday. What the hell? I'm singing happy birthday. That's nuts. 
Uh, but thank you for the super chat, Biggles. I got Jaeger Bomb. Neil Cuckman is to video games what Ruin Johnson is to films. When will companies take the hint that SJW are snakes in sheep's clothing? Well, and I, I agree. We're busting out the good stuff. You guys know I like to drink the, the cheap fucking bourbon. We're busting out Jack Daniels, guys. I mean, come on. doesn't get any classier than that. We're pulling out the real stuff for the for the celebration. Um. I totally agree, and I'm actually going to do some looking today about how it really is the last Jedi of us. That is th such a great comparison when you take a look at this game. Um, it's an incredibly apt comparison. Yes, I know, Boba Fett. Boba Fett, I've failed you. I've failed you. Uh, my time's been taken up doing naughty dog shit. I have failed you, but I promise you, it'll come someday. Some day it will. Um, Mr. Dr. Cornbread for the win. Abby's the ugliest game character I've ever seen. Abby looks like if you took a doll of Brock Lesnar and replaced its head with inbred Barbie. Damn, that is fucking harsh. That is fucking harsh. Uh, Surly Unicorn, congrats on the surge in subscribers. Thank you so much, Surly Unicorn. Appreciate that. I appreciate that. And thank you, Mr. Dr. Cornbread for the win. Um, your growth this week has been amazing. Thank you. I appreciate you, Boba Fett. We have Lorena in the chat. What's up, Lorena? Lorena was repping the Naughty Dog merch, or not the Naughty, the RK Outpost merch. Also, uh, thank you so much for that, Lorena. $1.99. Hey, Ryan, finally got a chance to drop in. Well, thank you for being here, Lorena. Appreciate you. We've got, man, you guys are not used to this many super chats coming in. Uh, $4.99 from Jaden. How can Ellie not let go of what the bigot says in the beginning, but can let Abby go for killing her father figure? The hypocrisy, not the hypocrisy, but like the kind of double standards, yeah, throughout this game. Um, there's so much to talk about. Um, and I agree, right? The idea that um, you're not able to forget. And listen, that was a little instance, took place over a very short amount of time. Whereas the Abby thing, she had a lot of time to reflect on everything, but then she still went out on the mission to kill her. Uh, I, I think that it's just a little crazy. I think it's just a little bit crazy, guys. Yeah, to be honest. Uh, and to address uh, to address that super chat from Mr. Doctor Cornbread about the ugliest video game character. Um, I listen. I think that Abby was. I think that Abby was specifically designed to be completely desexualized and completely, you know, have nothing like. I don't think they wanted anyone to be attracted to her, which is weird because then she had, you know, romantic relationships in it. When you look at the, uh, at some of the, you know, the, the bodybuilders that Abby's based off, a lot of them are very attractive. Abby's just simply not. She's completely desexualized and jacked. Uh, it's a very strange decision. Very strange decision. Um, I saw another one here from Caldwin, $1.99. Already bought it, but thanks for spreading truth. Uh, well, hey man, I listen. In all honesty, Caldwin, in all honesty, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, that's the thing, you know, <laughs> talking about Sarah, I see you, Stig. I see you, Stig. Um, if you can return it, if you don't like it, I would do that. But I hope that you like it. Uh, there's some misconception out there that everyone that doesn't like this game just wants everyone else to fucking suffer. And if you like it, you're a piece of shit. Uh, no, come on. Uh, if you like it, I'm glad you do. Um, but you know, I, I just, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's redonkulous. Uh, story man, Jack, what's up story man, Jack. Good to see you here. Also known as George big Dick Lucas. I really do not understand. It really is not hard. Not that hard to write a good story. Our entertainment is pretty much gone. I think that, um, and I want to I want to listen to what PewDiePie said um, because I've got clips from PewDiePie from when he finished The Last of Us and then when he finished The Last of Us Part Two, and I think it's interesting um, to hear the difference in his opinion. I think that they really, I think they took a risk with this story. I think they knew it was going to be divisive. I don't think they knew how much it would be. Um, but, you know, they did take a risk for sure in order to try to push a lot of their agenda and for shock value. 
not because the story told them they had to. I think they created the story to push an agenda and create shock value. And that's when that's the only thing you have in mind, I don't think it's going to make a good story. And I, I think that's what we're seeing here. Now, somebody brought up The Last Jedi. I do. I think that's a great fucking comparison. Um, grab this, uh, grab this super chat Canadian $10 from catalyst. Um, let's see, what is that? 46, right? Catalyst 46. Um, what is the way forward for rational gamers? <laughs> do you think Druckmann will continue to do these things on another beloved naughty dog titles? Will there be a turning point? I think that what we are seeing here, guys, what we are seeing here is that it's the same like Game of Thrones season eight. So we saw, we've heard these numbers. We've heard over 4 million sold, which would crush Spider-Man PS4 to be the, you know, the quickest selling, you know, PS4 exclusive that first weekend. But really what the sales do over time is going to be very telling. And when you look at things like Game of Thrones season eight, when you look at things like The Last Jedi, um, those were successful, right? You know, they made good money. And then for Game of Thrones case, it was the most watched HBO series of all time. That season eight finale, people all tuned in. But what happened after that, all the five Game of Thrones spinoffs, they all get canned because you've destroyed the fan base. The fan base doesn't trust you anymore. What happens with The Last Jedi? No one shows up for the rise of Skywalker. You go from 1.3, 1.4 billion dollars to just barely cracking a billion. Um, this this had this will have an effect on what they do in the future. Now, whether that's on a Last of Us Part Three that Druckmann hinted at, or whether maybe it takes form of well, maybe this Last of Us series on HBO might not get the green light after all. Maybe they'll axe that. You never know. But there's no doubt that these things have problems. Or Solo, exactly, Zach. Great point. Zach Foots in the chat or with Solo. Um, and I see Shellback saying uh, it's okay when you disagree with those people's wrong opinion. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely okay to disagree. And I had a good interaction this week. Um, but let's take a look. Uh, let's take a look at the Last Jedi. Um, boom, 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 boom. And why I think it's so it's such a great comparison. We don't need to share audio. Fuck that. All right. So when we look at Metacritic, we see what has happened. Uh, we see, <laughs> we see the critics loved it, and the audience almost a hundred fucking thousand reviews, user scores. That's insane, right? Uh, we know that a lot of the numbers, uh, both positive and negative, are people that are just trying to skew the score one way or the other. Let's not act like there's not positive review bombs here. Uh, Steph, my nerdy home. Um, I don't think she's in the chat today, but she uh, she had an incredible. Uh, she did an incredible thing where she took a bunch of screenshots and uh, like all the same words being used for these positive reviews. You could tell they were just spam positive reviews. That's happening on both sides, guys. Happening on both sides. And I see Riff Magos, who is a patron, is also now a channel member. Thank you, Riff Magos. I appreciate that. I appreciate that so much, man. I see a couple super chats. We will get to those as well, guys. Riff, thank you for becoming a new member. Now you can use the fuck naughty dog emote, my friend. So thank you. And the, and the other ones as well. But the fuck naughty dog is what so many people want right now. Uh, but a hundred fucking thousand reviews. That's insane. Now let's compare that. Let's compare that to The Last Jedi. Right? That critic score in the 90s. That audience score 43. Right about right where The Last of Us is sitting. Look at those user ratings, 219,000. That is way more than you would normally get. And for comparison's sake, right? You see this almost 100,000. Look at Final Fantasy, which released earlier this year. Um, pretty good critics, pretty good user score. Only 5,000 reviews. Almost 20 times as many reviews for, <laughs> for The Last of Us. And when you do the same thing with The Last Jedi, let's compare something else that released in 2017 that was well-received by both people. Let's try Wonder Woman, right? Only 129,000. 100,000 more reviews for The Last Jedi. Both positive and negative, fans are fucking divided. In reality, let's be real, it probably falls somewhere in the middle. Uh, if you were to give a, a normal assessment, you know, when I tried to 
put my review, which I couldn't. I could not post my review on Metacritic. It blocked it. Uh, I tried to give it a four because from everything that I've seen, I think that a four is fair. I think that there are a lot of things that are technically so good about this game. The graphics are obviously incredible. They did some pretty revolutionary things in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of just things like uh, the guitar uh, is incredible. The way that rope works in this game, it is, it's fairly tight. Some of the melee combat looks pretty bad. I'll be quite honest. But overall, the story is really what drives The Last of Us. It's what drove The Last of Us, and it's what drives The Last of Us Part Two. And when the story is lacking, when the story is divisive, when the story doesn't make sense, when the story is just made to shock you, it's a fucking problem. And that is definitely what we've seen. That's why I think The Last Jedi is such a great example. Such a great example. Um, now, let me catch back up. Uh, over 400 people watching. Thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. Um, Uncle Chunky Gaming, Canadian $5. Do you know what Naughty Dog is working on now The Last of Us 2 is out other than posting positive reviews on Metacritic and accusing us of being bigots? Um, I'm not quite sure. I know that new Crash game. I know that new Crash Bandicoot game was announced, but other than that, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, obviously... Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's not another Uncharted game in development. Um, again, they lost a lot of goodwill with Uncharted 4 with some of the decisions they made. And then the, uh, what was the one they made after that? The kind of standalone adventure. Um, uh, the, the name's escaping me right now. Lost Legacy, I think. Uncharted Lost Legacy. Um, they lost a lot of goodwill with that, to be quite honest. But thank you for the super chat, Uncle Chunky Gaming. Five dollars from the price is right. What's up, man? He says, "Yo, what's up, my man? Uh, keep up the good work, bro." So, ultimate cringe showdown: Brie Larson versus Abby versus Daisy Risley. Who wins the cringe fest? Oh God. Um, if we're talking just straight cringe, it's probably Daisy Ridley. Ray's pretty bad. Um, God, that is just an epic, an epic showdown, though. I don't even know how to accurately judge that. <laughs> I do not know. Yeah, that's what I thought, Nathan. I didn't think they were involved uh, because they don't have that anymore. So, uh, in, unless they have some, unless they get some ancillary, you know, uh, unless they get some kind of ancillary benefits from it since it did start with them, I don't really know. Look at that. The monthly member fee is worth the fuck baby Yoda emoji also. <laughs> Yes, you do get fuck baby Yoda. You do get fuck baby Yoda with that one. Uh, Jaden for four ninety nine. Ellie's PTSD should have been her killing people, not of Abby killing Joel. Why would she let her go if she gave her PTSD? I, that's the thing, right? And uh, God, that, that's the thing. I think that for her not to kill Abby at the end, I, listen, people are like, oh, you must, you must not understand this game. It's too high IQ for you. Shut the fuck up. No, everyone understands. It's about Ellie deciding to stop the cycle of violence, to stop the cycle of revenge. Um, that, that's not a hard concept to understand. What is a hard concept to grasp and understand is why at that moment she decides to, um, when she's literally killed fucking dozens and dozens and dozens of people to get to this point that had nothing to do with specifically Abby killing Joel. Um, it, that, that is the thing that is hard for a lot of people. And again, just like the way that they killed Joel in the beginning, I think that the reason they decided to let Abby go is for shock value. That, that is that like subversion of expectations, right? These are two things that is, that's all that fucking, the that's all that the media is right now not the media the entertainment is right now um the story is like and so they go for shock value and subverting your expectations and it's not a good practice it doesn't create good storytelling um good storytelling can be predictable at times um now is it a little more exciting when it's not when you throw in some things that aren't as predictable yes but specifically trying to subvert the audience's expectations if that's your only fucking goal and I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, Vincent says for $5. Thank you, Vincent. The last of us two, cis white female beats crap out of lesbian, but it's fine. 
<laughs> yeah, cis white female beats the crap out of literally everybody. And one of the things too, right, one of the things too about, hmm, one of the things that I have a problem with when it comes to uh, the people who are like, oh, uh, oh, Abby, Abby's so relatable though. They use this really cheap type of manipulation to make you feel some sympathy for Abby, which I think a lot of people don't. I think a lot of people don't. That's why you're seeing this divide. Even people that weren't spoiled for the game don't feel any sympathy for Abby. But it's so forced, right? Um, when when you play as Ellie, you're forced to fucking murder this dog, and you play as Abby, you're forced to play with this dog. You know, like little things like that. Uh, People aren't stupid. When you play that, they realize how you're trying to manipulate them. Um, that's just me. Darth Vader, uh, you spent the week talking about a computer game. Yes. Is that, is, that, is that a problem for you for some reason? Darth Vader? Uh, I, I enjoy the pun, though, about hitting a golf fade. I, I like that. Um, APAD. Number 28 for $4.99. Um, have you been seeing people call for a Last of Us 2 prequel? The early years of Tommy and Joel. Think Naughty Dog goes this route. I think that that is the only way they could go for a Last of Us Part 3. But in the same way that you're going to have a lot of people that... It's just like The Last Jedi, guys. In the same way, you are going to have people that look at this. That look at where Joel's story ends and how it ends, they're going to say, why do I want to play a prequel? Like, I know that that's the way the story ends. In the same way that you have people right now knowing how Luke Skywalker's story ends, uh, the absolute trash way that they decided to go in The Last of Us Part 2 was a fucking failure in every way, shape, or form, a miserable sack of shit. Why would they want to see another story about Luke Skywalker knowing that that's, that's what happens? I think you're going to see the same thing from a lot of Last of Us fans. Uh, when it comes to the idea of a Last of Us prequel. I'm Abby. Abby Skywalker. Alex says, Abby is a great character. Very underrated. Well, I'm glad you think so. I'm glad you think so. Uh, Robbie Schroeder. And guys, if I do guys, if I do miss a, a super chat or something, please let me know. It's obvious we have a lot of people in here. So just make sure to remind me if I don't get to it within, you know, if I, it seems like I skipped it or something. Uh, Robbie Schroeder for $5. Abby should have beaten the crap out of and her friends uh, killed by RTM and his friends from Metro Exodus just before she tries to kill Joel. Um, yes, should have been beating the crap out of her <laughs> and her friends. Yes, um, that would have been nice. I think a lot of people, that would have subverted people's expectations after the leaks came out. Uh, I agree, Robbie. That's pretty good. Um. The Last of Us 3 will be Ellie getting tortured to death by Abby in the first few minutes. She begs to die and tells Abby she deserves to die for killing people. Then Abby beats her to death with a guitar. Jesus. <laughs> Don't give him any ideas. Jaden, $1.99. Abby's the only one who interacts with actual kids. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, uh, I think that with uh, as being the only one who interacts with actual kids, she they try to give her sympathy that way. That's a great point, Jaden. Even the idea of killing a pregnant woman, right? When Ellie kills a pregnant woman and finds out about it later, she is almost fucking like, she goes into shock, basically. She can't believe it. She has a panic attack because of what she's done and the realization of what she's done. When Abby is sitting there and finds out she's about to kill a pregnant woman, she says, good. She's an evil bitch. Fuck Abby. Fuck Abby. Khalil, hey, Ryan. Five dollars. Thank you. Hey Ryan, have you played Spec Ops: The Line? It's a great game that succeeds where The Last of Us Two fails. I've not played Spec Ops: The Line, Khalil Hines. Um, I wish I had though. It sounds sounds like it's good. Sounds like it's good. Um, I saw a Blue Eyed Scorpio. <laughs> not gonna read that one, Schnick. It's funny though. Uh, Blue Eyed Scorpio for down on years. Early years of what? Virus started in part one. Well, you could see. There, I mean, there's almost 20 years between, uh, right, right, right around 20 years, right? Maybe not quite that much, but there's a lot of time between when The Last of Us starts and then where we find Joel later. So I could definitely see them doing something. I could definitely see them doing something. 
at least giving more more you know idea about it price is right for ten dollars thank you price uh it's hilariously ironic to me that one naughty dog franchise is getting driven into the ground while another former naughty dog franchise is getting rebirthed into something amazing by toys for bob yeah that's true that's true price um dark side droids then comes in and says the new crash bandicoot game is going to be loaded with microtransactions well uh, that's not too surprising Noise in my background. Noise in my background, says Scott Murphy. I May mean, I have a fan on? Is it very loud? I don't think it's that loud. Oh, no, there's nothing going on. Her ass got sexualized, says Elizabeth. Yes, her ass did get sexualized. Oh, my God. You know, I think Lethal may join us at some point in time on this. I wanted to go... Uh, let's listen to PewDiePie right now. Actually, I have this queued up. I think this is awesome. You know, seven years apart or right around there. PewDiePie's take on The Last of Us when he played it. Vice the Last of Us Part Two. Oh, birds! Uh, yeah, the windows are open. You might hear a couple, few birds. Um, but I wanted to listen to PewDiePie. Seven years. You know, seven years change. Hmm. Let's see what we got. God, look at young PewDiePie. Holy shit, he sounds so different too. Volumes on. Let's listen. Love the atmosphere of this game. I can tell for sure that I will replay this game uh, once I'm done playing with it, and that I feel like that that's a good criteria of a game right there. One of the best triple A titles that I played. Timothy, thank you. How are you doing? I bought your merch. Thank you so much for buying the merch. We've got a lot of people buying the fuck Naughty Dog merch, guys. I will share that. Uh, I will share that in the chat as soon as we're done with this video. Um, and Elizabeth says, hail, hail Elizabeth. Good to see you here. All right, here we go. Played in, uh, maybe, maybe in, in fucking since at least five years. Um, definitely like it's, you can't just compare any other AAA title with this. All we get is fucking Halo and Call of Duty. And it's like, you can't compare that to this. Okay. There are some other titles, whatever. Fuck it. AI, <laughs> not so good glitches bad but that's that's it that's like the only bad now the ai in this game is pretty trash as well pretty trash as well just just to be real um we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of problems with the ai specifically regarding when you're in stealth in this game think about the game so but I'm he's talking about the last of us the first one and nine pills out of out of ten uh i want i want to give it ten but just because of those reasons i, I don't think I don't, I'm sorry, I just don't. Would I play it again? No, I probably wouldn't. Um, now, this was just yesterday, I believe, uh, right when Pewds finished the game. Right when he finished the game. I don't really see a point. <laughs> I don't see a point in replaying. Look at him. Man. Now, PewDiePie is someone who went in trying to trying to like this he loves the first game you just heard the, his feelings about the first game he's not someone who wanted to hate it and i don't think listen let's be real before these leaks came out i don't think anyone you know wanted to hate this game at all they tried something different and i can respect that and i just don't think it really worked to be honest um they could have i feel like they needed more people's input on it <laughs> i'll check I mean, that maybe this is what they really felt strongly about and fair enough but i think uh small adjustments could have really made a huge difference like playing abby in the beginning the way it played out even the character development that's one thing too and we're going to we're going to listen to another creator who had very similar uh very similar criticisms about the way that they introduced abby that about how much better it could have been done but instead they went for the shock value associated with it. So let's listen to him finish up here. This is really dark, weird ending where Ellie loses everything. It's just like, okay, give it a rating. Uh, probably like a six out of 10. Would it make sense? There you go. If that six out of 10, six out of 10 from pews, which isn't as low as a lot of people thought he would have considering how much he disliked the game. But I really think he was trying to give it a very, 
a very fair analysis, a very fair analysis of what he tried to give it. So six out of 10 for PewDiePie. Um, Lavar or Luke, I found your super chat. I'm sorry that I missed it, my friend. Um, five pounds. Saying the last of us two has good writing is like saying the room has good writing. It's objectively wrong. Well, thank you for that super chat. I am sorry that I missed it earlier. Let me scroll through, just make sure I didn't miss any others. You guys have been very generous and I, I really appreciate you guys. Um, I think we're caught up. I think we're caught up, but thank you. Um, I would say four. Yeah, that, that's what I said. Uh, my judgment was four, um, but you know, six. I, that's why I'm saying the middle of the road scores are probably really the most accurate. Um, there are a lot of people giving it zeros. There's a lot of people giving it tens on Metacritic. But uh, negative infinity. <laughs> Luis, five out of 10. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. Right around there. Right around there. Yeah, Luke, so sorry I missed that earlier, brother. But uh, sorry I missed that earlier. But there's 600 people in chat. Thank you guys so much for being here. Now, I wanted to listen to, here it is, Berlizzi. I, I think that this is a, a great take. Uh, now, there's language warning, just so you guys know. Uh, just so you guys know, but he's talking about how the way they handled death in the last of us, right? The way, hi, blue eyed Scorpio. I see you. Uh, the way they handled death in the first one and how impactful it was, um, versus what they do with this game. Um, thank you, Scott Murphy. Uh, no, absolutely. Um, it is my pleasure to, uh, to create stuff for you guys. So. Let's listen to Berlizzi. You think about Joel's? You can try and make an argument like, I mean, yeah, Joel was a bad guy. He did kill a lot of people in order to keep uh, Ellie safe. But like, let us let us feel that then. Let us let us let us come to that conclusion on our own, nigga. Everybody who played this game and got to that scene, everybody thought, what the. F why you shouldn't think that if you're if you're a dope ass writer with your shit then you should lead people to their you should lead people to the water right then let them drink for themselves now you had us you had us trying to drink in the desert with no source of no signs of water exactly that's a lot of people's problem is you are just Joel dies suddenly, and then you're just beat repeatedly over the head. Well, he's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. Instead of exactly like he said, letting people come to that themselves. And listen, Joel's not a bad guy. Let's keep it fucking straight. Joel's not a bad guy. The fucking fireflies, fuck those motherfuckers. We'll talk about that in a second, too. Why? What sense does that? Even if you would have had the flashback happen before the death, right? Give us some kind of hints that Ellie. Ah! <laughs> See, look, this is what this is evoking from people who are trying to give this thing a chance, who are doing their damnedest to give this thing a chance. This shit is just, it's just not good. It's just not good. And, and this is coming from somebody who is really trying to give y'all a chance, who is really trying to understand that the angles that y'all are coming from. But this just feels like, this feels a lot less poetic and a lot more political, bro. And that's all I'm gonna say on it. I don't know what agendas y'all was trying to push on this, but I guess I, I feel like I'll, I'll know by the end of this. I feel like mm. I'll know by the end of this. Maybe y'all just had a brand new team and y'all was like, you know what? Last of Us One was a classic 200 Game Awards. We gotta, we gotta flip the script with the second one. Yes, they tried to flip the script, right? They were like, Neil Neil Druckmann put out a tweet where he's like, "Hey, we love and respect our fans, but just so you know, love and respect doesn't equal pander. It's not pandering. It, listen." If the majority of fans agree with what you did, that doesn't make it pandering. I feel like there's this misconception nowadays. I feel like there's this misconception where creators think that if you do what your fans are all expecting and all want, then that's pandering. That's not necessarily true. You know, it, it's just not. And I, I think it was very obvious that so many people have a fucking problem 
with this game. And it's it's not because they're sexist. It's not because they're homophobic. It's not because they're racist. It's not because whatever, right? It's not because they're bigot sandwiches. It's because of the story. And the story in The Last of Us is what made it great. It's what made it special. So for The Last of Us 2, when the story is flawed, uh, and I think that's the only way to say it is flawed. Even if, if, if you like it, if you're looking at the other side of the internet and you're seeing all these people that are really fucking upset, you have to admit that, that something is flawed, even if you enjoyed it. Um, in the same way that if, if I enjoy something um, and I look and everybody else says this, I'm like, well, something didn't connect. There's some disconnect, whether it's because it wasn't made for mass market, whether it's because the choices, something is wrong. Um, what goes on a bigot sandwich? Me. No. <laughs> um, let's see. Catullus for five Canadian dollars says, Joel is just a broken man in a collapsed society. Yeah, he wasn't, a, he was not a villain. Um, it, he's not a villain. If, if you have kids, you will, you will make the same decisions that Joel made. Um, and that doesn't mean that Abby's wrong for wanting him dead. Let me be clear. Abby is not wrong for wanting to kill the person that killed her father. She's not. Um, we all see more context behind that, and we wish she would understand. She's not wrong for wanting to kill him. Um, but they, the, the creators of this story didn't do a good enough job of showing all these things and instead went for shock value of him dying in the first two hours. We haven't even got to the fucking false advertising surrounding this, how they used Joel to promote this game, knowing that you wouldn't want to play as fucking Abby. If they had a game with Ellie and Abby on the fucking cover or some shit, or told you if Neil Druckmann hadn't lied to us when he said Ellie's the only playable character, 4 million wouldn't have bought this game. Bottom fucking line. There's no doubt. Uh, Blue-eyed Scorpio for $1.99. Been here the whole time. I know you have. Uh, just saying hi, because you are cool. Well, thank you so much, Blue-Eyed Scorpio. Um, we're going to... Oh, I told you guys I would share the Fuck Naughty Dog merch. Oh, my gosh, are people upset about this. I'll show you some Twitter. I'll show you some Twitter later on. Um, Doom Studios. Hey, man, starting to become a fan, but I thought part two was a good game. Nice. But I just don't like what Naughty Dog is doing. I hope Naughty Dog will the lesson for when there's a next title. Well, thank you, Doom. And... Not everyone, that's a misconception, right? Not everyone that watches this channel agrees, and that's okay. Um, it wouldn't be very good discussion if everyone did that. Did I really? AFK, what? Hold on, AFK. I could never, I could not have missed your super chat. I would never do such a thing. Hold on. I gotcha. I, oh my gosh, $2. $2 from AFK Bard. Abby is armed and dangerous. Thank you, AFK Bard. I can't believe I missed your super chat, but I got it. Thank you for calling me out. Thank you for calling me out. We have so many people, guys. 650 fucking people in this chat. You guys are fucking incredible. But like I said, let me uh, let me share. Let me share my fuck Naughty Dog merch. If you guys would like to get some of this fuck Naughty Dog uh, it, it's very divisive. Uh, it's very divisive. We'll take a look at some Twitter action I had yesterday with some retards, and that's fine. That'll be fun. That will be so fun to take a look at. Now, um, I wanted to – I had a, a graphic that I wanted to show you guys. Here it is. Um, boom, boom, boom. All right. Where is this? I'm trying to pull up Facebook. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Now, right here. Ellie. Now, this, this is explaining, right? This is explaining why Joel was not wrong for what he did. Uh, Ellie, I was supposed to die in that hospital. Joel, making that vaccine was a gamble, Ellie. You're not the first test subject, and you'd most likely not have been the last. Even if by some miracle they managed to make a vaccine, the world ain't going to automatically return to what it was. Dog eat dog is the new normal. Infected cannibals and raiders are still there, and it ain't going away soon or maybe even ever. On top of that, mass production and distribution of a vaccine is absolutely just a nightmare in a post-apocalyptic world. They simply don't have enough resources for that. And who's to say that those incompetent fireflies wouldn't use it 
to uh, wouldn't use it to as a bargaining tool to put everyone willing or not under their new rule. And even given all that, they debated killing me after I delivered you, Ellie. I did the job and the payment I got was getting knocked out and being marched outside of the safe zone at gunpoint without my weapons and supplies. The fireflies broke the deal and fucked me over. I killed people for less, baby girl. Right? And I see that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joseph, for the subscribe. I appreciate that. Uh, it's a naughty dog eat dog world. <laughs> yes, it is indeed. And this, this is the point, right? This is the point. Joel is not wrong in what he did. The fireflies knocked his ass out, put Ellie under. We're basically going to kill her without her fucking consent. They were just going to kill her. Now, could that have potentially saved the world? Yeah, it could have. But as someone who this is now your fucking father or your daughter, you do not do this. You know, fucking father, no father would let this happen to their daughter or to their child. I'm just telling you, um, Joel made the right decision by killing each and every one of those motherfuckers. And indeed, if you play the first game, if you play The Last of Us and you stand there in the fucking hospital, guess what happens when the doctor pulls out his scalpel? If you don't shoot him, he comes after you to kill you. So there's a little bit of a problem with your game because uh, if you don't, if you just sit there and try not to kill anybody, they attack you. So Joel did the right thing. Let's all be clear. Um, Drex six or nine oh six for five dollars. How about Druckmann's character in the game and how he's portrayed as smug but likable playboy? His character also loves Abby, spits on Joel. Well, Drex, although it does look exactly like Neil Druckmann, uh, Neil did not do the motion capture. Um, it's a different, uh, it's a different guy who did it, who it's based off of. Um, I forget his name, um, but I, I can look it up for us in a little bit if you want. Um, it's confirmed to not have been Neil Druckmann. However, it does look an awful lot like him, and he does fit, I'll fucking spit right on Joel, um, which is you know a lot of people, a lot of people failed to notice that. A lot of people failed to notice that. Um, all right, now I'm like paranoid about all these fucking about missing super chats, guys. So my bad. Um, yes, hybrid, I have. I have seen Neil Druckmann's kind of funny interview. Um, I've heard the part where he talks about specifically being involved with uh, the copyright takedowns. Heard that. That didn't escape me. I made a video on that subject. Um, I just don't understand spitting. Yeah, just above me. Just above me. Uh, I have seen Jeremy John's Last Was Part 2 review. Yes, I have. What did I say I was going to do next? Do you guys remember? I totally fucking forget now. Oh, Twitter. I want to show you guys how butthurt people are. I want to show you guys how uh, how butthurt people are. Let's see. Um, bum, bum, bum. We're going to Twitter. Thank all you guys for being here. 700 people. We've cracked seven fucking hundred. That's what I'm talking about, everybody. That is what I'm talking about. Now, um... Oh my God, I forgot all this shit that I did yesterday on Twitter. <laughs> oh man. All right, let's share it. Let's share the screen. Let's blow it up a little bit so you can see it better. Now this, Nick Marcel, LV1 Gaming, um, right? Tweets this out. I literally can't anymore. And then a picture of me with my fuck Naughty Dog merch. He literally couldn't. He literally couldn't with my fuck Naughty Dog merch, uh, right? And so this guy is a writer for Level 1 Gaming. I've been trying to keep an eye on Level 1 Gaming just in case. Just in case. Yeah, that face. Yeah, fuck it. Of course, right? <laughs> of course he decides to take a picture of me when I'm like this. Or whatever the fuck I'm looking at. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you can freeze frame on any fucking picture. And there's people like, what? This dude don't even have teeth. I'm like, you're, you're fucking retarded, uh, you motherfuckers. But I retweeted, said, at least have the balls to tag me, you little bitch. And buy my merch. Right? And uh, 
And then he he did. It turns out that somewhere down the line, not in this one, not in this tweet that got like, you know, 365 likes. Um, <laughs> not in this tweet that had 365 likes, but much further down, he did tag me. It had it had two interactions, which, you know, I'm not uh, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to say I'm big time because I'm not big time, but I have a lot of notifications um, so I, I don't see things like that. You need to tag me on the real thing, buddy. If you want me to know, if you want me to notice, um, and this went on for quite a while, a lot of people roasting this motherfucker all because of my merch. Um, this people, <laughs> this people so, uh, sends this to me. Uh, Ellie loves nuggets. LOL. You are such a joke. Go suck star Wars. Remember to leave some skin. You dumb fucker. Uh, yes. Everyone knows my love for Disney star Wars. Uh, th they're not sending their best. And I did tag him right there. And then I just had to, I just had to, to the extraordinary amount of losers and weirdos who won't stop talking about me for hating the last of us too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're forced to spurg out because so many people hate this game. Get your fuck naughty dog shirts here. I had to, I just had to do it. A fat girl. Ooh, that'd be good. Darcello. Catalyst for five Canadian dollars. You need a fuck Naughty Dog shirt with that Abby scene meme on it. Ooh, happy the channel's doing well. See you later. Hey, Catalyst, thank you so much for your support today. Thank you for being a part of the channel. I do really appreciate it, my friend. I do really appreciate that. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. You got, I can't believe so many people are here right now. Melissa for $2. Hey, Ryan, it's my birthday. I'm having fun watching the stream. Melissa, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Melissa. Hope it's a great one. Relax. Try to relax a little bit. Um, Riff right here says, uh, Riff Magos says, Australian $5. Here's a nifty idea. Instead of subverting expectations, they create memorable characters and storylines, thereby engaging more and more people. Um, well, I think one thing you can say about this is that it will be memorable. Uh, I think that it will indeed be memorable. I think people are going to remember this for a long time in the same way that something like The Last Jedi was memorable, in the same way that Game of Thrones Season 8 was memorable because of what it did to a beloved franchise, what the potential that it had, and how they just fucked it all away. Uh, but you're right. Uh, subverting expectations is the focus for so many people for some reason, and I just don't quite understand why. I don't look at fucking blue eyed Scorpio. Merry Christmas, Melissa. You, I think you missed the point. I think you missed the point. Blue eyed Scorpio dude. My friend says he actually likes Abby. What? Hey, there's people out there. There's been people in the chat that are saying that too. So, you know, that's awesome. If you like Abby, I'm glad you can enjoy the character. I would say you're in the minority at this point. Um, from what I've seen from a lot of the reactions, but Hey, no worries. Uh, no worries. Um, we're gonna we're gonna invite some more people on, guys, because I've been going solo for about forty-seven minutes. Mm. About forty-seven minutes. It's going really well, though. I'm glad that we're here. We are going to talk a little bit about DCU at some point, guys. So that will be going soon. Uh, Luke says. Um, can I ask what your end goal would preferably be? I love your arguments and agree with them. Would like to know what you'd like to see happen. What I'd like to see happen is this, this reaction, I'm hoping, will go to further show people that, hey, um, when you do these things, fans will reject it. Fans will not buy your stuff if you continue to uh, do push some sort of agenda and treat beloved characters like shit or their endings like shit just because you want to shock people and you think that you are the arbiter of um, what fans deserve to get. You know what I mean? So I don't think there's anything to change this game. There's petition going around that has almost 50,000 signatures to remake it. I think we all know that's not going to happen. Petitions are more about a like getting the word out there that we didn't fucking like this thing. Um, so going forward, I would like to see people change. I would like to see the gaming industry realize that, wow, uh, we can't just keep shoving things down their throats. You know what I mean? That's uh, that's what I would like to see happen. They are just promoting my merch, indeed. And I see AF AFK Bart. I saw your super chat. Uh, $5. Fuck Naughty Dog Golf Clubs, please. Think we could get it autographed. 
Um, golf clubs are kind of expensive. Um, but you know what? If if there is somehow a uh, a fuck naughty dog golf club, I you know I don't know if you want me to sign it. Maybe you want Abby to sign it. Maybe you want Abby to sign it. But we have a guest, guys. We have a guest here. So let me put. Whoa, here we go. There we go. Mara is here. Jade Shadow, how are you doing, Mara? I'm good. Nice lazy Sunday for once. Nice lazy Sunday. Yeah, it was a little bit lazy for me as well. Um, guys, if you don't know, if you don't know Jade Shadow, um, she is one of the ones like myself that got false copyright struck by Naughty Dog for talking about these leaks back when it happened. So we were paying very close attention when this game came out. Yeah, and I, the I, the uh, irony of the, the video that I did that got copyright strike was me chastising them for copyright striking other videos. Exactly. You know, both. Uh, you know, both you and Lethal. Did I really raging rhino? Fuck, man. God, let me get it, raging rhino. Uh, both you and Lethal made videos that didn't have anything in them, any images of fucking anything. Uh. Yeah, and that's fucking bullshit. What the fuck is that, Rhino? That is a little... It's a pair. Like it's the pair. Fist. Oh, the pair. Yeah. Bump, he's doing fist bumps. Thank yeah. you, Raging Rhino. Australian 499 with the pair guy. Thank you, Raging Rhino. Raging Rhino, a great dude. One of my patrons. Just like AFK Bars, one of my patrons as well. Um, you guys are awesome. But hail Queen Mara, says Becky. <laughs> Um, thank you, Becky. I was, uh, I'm not a queen, but thank you. <laughs> Mara's not a queen, guys. You heard it there, so don't let Lethal call her a queen from now on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> EXP Story Gamer, loving the stream. Also subscribe. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, EXP Story Gamer. Good to see you here. I am glad you subscribed. Um, let's see. Frank the Bunny. <laughs> Ellie Abby Levin. All the slaves would be dead if Fat Geralt hadn't helped them out. Fat Geralt is a fucking hilarious meme. Uh, Larry, you're not chopped liver. You're awesome, Larry. Larry's a channel member. Larry's a big supporter of the channel. So you're good, Larry, Larry. All right. Uh, so now Mara, with, with a mm -hmm. week of what about 10 days has passed since the release of this game, it doesn't seem like things are slowing down when it comes to the hate. Um, that, wow, the Metacritic score is creeping up a little bit. I think there's a, a little counter a counter, uh, you know, going on with Metacritic to try to get some of these positive reviews in there. But have you watched some of the streams that people have done? What do you think most people's takeaway is? Um, I mean, do you mean like, you know, people's takeaways of the game? Mm -hmm. I, I think like the honest takeaways for the game is that the game itself is middle of the road. So if we were like to remove all the like purposefully um, like low scores, which is like the, all the zeros, and then all the ones that are saying, well, this game deserves an deserves a seven or an eight, but I'm going to give it a 10 sort of approach to kind of skew it the other way. You would probably see a score somewhere between, I think like five and six, probably like what PewDiePie gave would be like a six out of 10. What I think would be the actual score we'd be seeing on Metacritic if there weren't the review bombing on both sides of the spectrum, because what I'm seeing is like gameplay wise, it's a decent ga like game. Uh, like, you know, like this, the, uh, 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 maneuverability, sneak approaches, the fighting, things like that. That's a decent uh, game itself. What kills it is the story because of um, not necessarily exactly what happens to Joel, but the fact that they lied about him being in the game for so long and then you're forced to play as a character that um, kills Joel with no consequences for her actions. So... When you factor that in, I think that's what's killing the the score for the game. Yeah, and it, I, like obviously that's uh, that's such a big thing is revenge bad, violence bad. But the mm -hmm. person that got revenge, the person that got vengeance, the person that used violence the entire game gets everything they wanted for the mm -hmm. most part. I mean, you know, some of her friends die for sure, but she gets the revenge that she wanted, and she gets away. And yeah. uh, that that's just that's sitting so poorly in a lot of people's heads. I think and what's also sitting poorly, sorry, is that um, like prior to her killing Joel, he and Tommy save her. I yes. think at least once or like multiple times. So it's you would think like 
basically creative writing 101, and that is, if you're going to create a three-dimensional character, you would have that character who's out for revenge, maybe, just maybe, having some doubts, having some internal conflict within that person. Like, do I really, well, I mean, I hate this person. He or she killed, pick, you know, pick a family member, pick a friend, whatever. But I'm seeing them as they are, not as how I imagined, and they're actually decent people. Do I want to kill them? And you, but you take it that out of the equation, and when you, and she kills him with no remorse, beats up, beats up Dina, beats up Ellie, um, and Dina's the pregnant girl that's, um, I guess, together with Ellie. And then it's like, and then she gets away at the end because Ellie has a flashback with Joel playing the guitar and like, oh, I can't kill Abby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And what? that's like, I, I that's so eye rolling for some people. The idea that after all of this, you'd be ready to fucking do this. You've left everything behind that. You have this vision of Joel and you're like, how oh, he, he wouldn't want me to kill her. Fuck you. Yes, he fucking would. You fucking retarded. Yeah. Like nobody believes that ending. That, that, that's such a big thing. Um, it's a really bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Mushroom Classic here says, fuck Ryan Kennel. I'm sorry your life's so fucking miserable, Mushroom Classic, uh, that you have a fucking Toucan Sam profile picture and nothing better to do. Go fuck yourself, you little bitch. Um, but anyway, but anyway. Um, yes, yes, Ryan, I'm frightened. I'm frightened of women. Um, but anyway, this is one of the things, right? This is one of the things that Mara just mentioned, the false advertising that I, that I didn't get to. So thank you for reminding me. Um, if you didn't know, they literally created fake parts of this game, right? Fake trailers, fake models in different parts of the trailers that were not anywhere in the game just for the trailers. And Neil Druckmann even admits to doing this. He even admits to doing this, right? So it, it's not like... It's not like they decided to, oh, well, uh, we changed it mid-game. We changed the story. No, it's nothing like that. We have Neil Druckmann admitting that on It's Kind of Funny. And I will pull that up. I will pull that up after we take a look at this. But for those, I think I turned the audio on. Let's go ahead and watch the fucking trailer. I'm sure all you guys have seen this already. What the hell are you doing here? You think I'd let you do this on your own? It's almost like we're going to go on adventure. It's like we're going to go on an adventure with Joel and Ellie. Uh, can't wait. Can't wait to see what that is. But when we get to the actual game, we know that that's not the case. Here. I think I'd let you do this on your own. Jesse. And of course, it's Jesse, not Joel. Quite a shock for those of us. Now, some people are like, oh, amazing. What a shock. They tricked me. Uh, yeah, they fucking tricked you into thinking that this game would be something that it was not. And they knew that it would have this effect. Um, like, how... What do you think? What do you think it would have been? What do you think the sales would have been if this had just been, hey guys, uh, just being straight up with you, we're making a game about Joel or about Ellie and Abby. Joel will be a part of it, guys. So don't worry, Joel will be in the game, but it's primarily focused on Ellie and Abby. What do you think the sales would have been? Hmm. I mean, I think, well, one, I don't think they would have been as high as they're uh, claiming with the 4 million number. I don't think they would be anywhere close. It would probably still be in the millions to say like, you know, a couple millions because people would still be happy with being able to play as Ellie because that's what they were looking forward to um, when they were told that she was the only playable character in the game. Uh, even I would say, despite probably Joel being the more of a fan favorite over Ellie, they, there's still mm -hmm. love for that character. So I think there would still be people going out and buying the game but at the same time, when you're saying, oh, you play as this other character that uh, we're introducing in this game, you have no connection to that character, people are going to be like, well, I don't necessarily want to buy a game until I know what it is about this character, like what it is about this character, who this character is, what's their motivations, what's uh, what's um, like this, at least a little bit of the story surrounding this character. Like, I, 
pretty much. You're going coming. I'm coming in wanting to play as characters I know, but then you want me to play as another character that you're introducing. So I, I would be hesitant to go out and buy it necessarily until I know for sure what the, at least the premise around that character is going to be. Yeah, exactly. And um, like, I think that that's all, that's all that, uh, that's one of the things that people are really upset about. That type of feels like false advertising. Mm -hmm. Salt to shark for $2 unironically said fucking boomerang while gaming. I, I did fuck those boomerangs in Mario Kart. Uh, they're <laughs> fucking trash. Thank you for the super chat, Salsa Shark. Um, now, now, we have another guest, ladies and gentlemen. Drunk 3PO's here. What's up, Jay? I just woke up from a nap. Well, that sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. Like four hour, four and a half hours. It was awesome. Four and a half hours? It's like wow. a fucking night of sleep. Holy Does shit. I even care. Does that even count as a nap when you sleep? No. <laughs> That's kind of like a mini coma, pretty much. That's changing your fucking sleep cycle. That ain't a fucking nap. Yeah. Um, that is not a nap. It was glorious. It was glorious. Uh, it was now, glorious. How, how are you doing? Dang, how many today? people you got in here? What the heck? We, we got 681 right now. Uh, we had a I little wanna, over 700 for a while. Dang, I want to put my like makeup on and... <laughs> <laughs> you thought it's just a chill. You thought it's just a chill stream, but uh, no, we got we got a good group in here. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here, everybody. Uh, if you haven't, uh, if you're new to the channel, think about subscribe and smash that like button. Um, we've got a good uh, a good crew going here. And Robin SNL with a two dollar super chat doesn't say anything, but thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, now I'm looking for here it is. Kind of funny. I kind of hear an echo too. What the fuck is that? Always when I come in, there's an echo in there. Yeah, I think I'm just so fucking loud. I think that's the problem. I think I'm just too loud. Now let's see. It was an amazing moment. Well, I mean, that was the thing for me of having the game quote him. Here it is. This is when they're talking about the leaks. This is when they're talking about protecting the story. And I, I thought this was interesting what they said. I got too many tabs open. It's killing my fucking. Let's see the rest of it to see if the rest of it works. Uh, but at some point, it's it's and it took a few days. Now this is Neil Druckmann, Ashley Johnson, and Troy Baker. So Neil Druckmann is Neil Cuckman. Uh, Troy Baker is uh, the voice of Joel, and Ashley Johnson is the voice of Ellie. You just realize. Oh, and they you know they all happen to be you know the first appearance they make is uh, you know on a channel with Greg Miller who said that the game is a masterpiece, gave it an incredible fucking score. What, what a shock, right? Um, I wonder if Greg Miller had given this a 7 out of 10, uh, if he would have got to have this interview. You think so? No, he wouldn't have. And that's the fucking problem with these guys who smooth up and get all this access. You can't fucking trust them because this is, this is what happens. Even if he's being completely honest, how am I supposed to fucking believe that Greg Miller is being completely honest when he gives it a perfect score and then gets to talk, gets these exclusive interviews? It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> the worst happened. The worst way that this game could be presented already happened. Like our worst fear. Because we did so much to try to protect the story, right? Including putting fake shots and trailers and swapping skins on characters and recording a different line with Troy. Still has a man bun. Well, he does still have the man bun, but there you are. Right, that should tell everyone right then and there, okay? The dude still has a man bun. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> not That's to be I'm trusted. Uh, man buns are not to be trusted. And you know, you, you saw him admitting exactly what they did. He's not even he's not even coy about it. We did fake shots, fake lines, all these things to protect the story. And to one person, that might mean protecting the story. Uh, to another person that's completely misleading people. And that's what trailers do, right? We can't just, um, you know, in the same way someone brought up in the chat, Hulk and the Infinity War trailer, right? You show him it's Hulk, but he actually ends up in the Hulkbuster armor. Um, yeah. That's That was a scene specifically made to mislead fans. But Hulk was still in, in, this, in this story, right? He was still played a big part of it. Uh, even though he wasn't necessarily the the Green Hulk for a lot of it. Um, this recording fake lines with Joel that never happened to make you think that Joel would be a huge part of the story when, in fact, it's all in the past. It's all in flashbacks. 
is <laughs> just inexcusable and completely false advertising. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, uh, I see Fatal in the chat. What's up, Fatal? Good no, to they see just, you. They just, I mean, they. Uh, it's it's amazing how some things are successful because of good word of mouth, mm -hmm. and some things have to be overly exaggeratedly lied and teased on to try to get people to purchase um, the product that they're trying to do. Uh, there, there's other things that that were that you know that didn't have good trailers but because of word of mouth because people enjoyed it they uh it, it the, the sales went on and on and on and on and on so mm -hmm. you know i do i do agree like i did that video with the last jedi i know you guys i think you talked about that earlier the last jedi uh comparison it's yeah. uh it's 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 scary similar exactly scary similar. That's why I have all this stuff pulled up because I'm probably going to make a video, like come delve it a little deeper into that with all the Rotten Tomatoes, with all the reaction, got all these articles set up where it's like, oh, review bombing, review bombing, review bombing, Russian bots, the same shit coming from the same people. Um, yeah, it's uh, – you think? do you think they went this way because of the TV show? Which way? What? Like um, with a the whole Abby killing off Joel, putting the girls, you know, I'm, did you guys, are you spoilers? Like, that's cool, right? Like, yeah, we're doing spoilers. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay. Spoiler warning. Do you think all that is like, I, I, ha I have this odd sensation feeling that it's, uh, it's all part of the, the TV show. They're trying to make sure that the TV show stays on agenda style for what, what they're trying to do. So you know, for HBO. It's going to be on HBO, correct? Yeah. Uh, well, yes, it is going to be on yeah. HBO. So, so. I mean, maybe I could see that um, since if they're trying to make it more female-centric, but at the same time, it's... Well, of course they're going to make it... That's what I'm saying. Like, of yeah, course. Sorry, I'm saying, like, I mean, know, look at that. Joel, Joel was a character everybody loved, and they mm -hmm. killed him off, just like they did Luke Skywalker. They did the whole thing. They killed off the old white dude. And then they uh made they forced you like like the the I think the reactions to people playing Abby mm -hmm. from PewDiePie on on like really I gotta play mm -hmm. yeah like that I think that was to me that was funnier than the reactions <laughs> to the end of the game where they were just like yeah this game was so so but yeah um like, like they just yeah like when he's like really I gotta play ten hours <laughs> are you fucking kidding me yeah. <laughs> yeah. like, so so like if that this that just cuts right into the television. The TV show yeah. they're gonna do, so why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they do that? Now, do you think HBO? And here's a question. I know you got stupid chats. Do you think HBO went to them and said, "I need you to go this route, and we'll pay you all this extra money"? I don't think because we want to push. No, okay. I, I Just curious. I, I, Just I curious. Think that, I think that this could affect the HBO show. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. I, like so, right now, what we know about the HBO show is it is going to center on the events of the first game with a potential to tie things in from The Last of Us Part Two, That is what we know from all the reports. Neil Druckmann is going to be writing the show. He's going to be involved in production of The Last of Us Show. So I think that this could have some pretty big ramifications. Like I said, with Game of Thrones, yeah, a lot of people watched season eight and then everything associated with Game of Thrones got fucking canceled. Because Can of you imagine season one does extremely well on HBO and everybody... And then they last Jedi the second series. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, Neil will be sitting on a beach. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. he, if that's his attitude, I don't really care. I made my money. So whatever, uh, which is really sad, but it's just uh, crazy. I don't know. Crazy, crazy. Like me personally, I was never really looking forward to the show to begin with. Um. Like right now, I'm playing Witcher three, so I might um, pause that, try playing Last of Us Part One, to see how it is. Because I've watched, I've watched gameplay of it; looks decent. It, it, it's good. It, the The story is really good for The Last of Us. It is really good. Uh, the gameplay is, uh, the gameplay is solid. Uh, I wouldn't say it's memorable. But it does get a little repetitive. Mm -hmm. uh, however, the story is what Last of Us is all about, which is why when the story hurts here, it's such a big factor. Um, 
But I do need to get let me hit a couple of these super chats, guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh Taker610 for five dollars. Thank you. Says Ryan, look up YouTube channel Quony. Last of us two She Hulk in action. Fucking hilarious. Only a minute and a half long. I have it pulled up. We will take a look at it. Um, so thank you. And then Robin SNL with another dollar super chat. Again, no, no text attached to it. Um, I saw you talking about that little in chat. I don't see any text attached to it, but thank you very much. Um, let's see, Curtis. Curtis YZ for $5. I hope you play Dying Light 2 so you can shit harder on The Last of Us 2. Please do when it comes out. Um, I'll keep an eye for Dying Light 2. Thank you, Curtis, mm -hmm. for the super chat. Uh, we're shitting pretty hard on it as it is, though. Uh, then AFK Bard for another $10 super chat says, but those ropes, Ryan, <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> well, the rope is fucking cool. I will say the some of the things that they made for this game, you can tell they took a lot of time and effort. But unfortunately, the thing that matters the most in this game is the story. And, uh, you know, that that is where they failed. But thank you for the 10 out of 10, $10 super chat, AFK Bard. You are wonderful. I appreciate you. And then I saw Melissa Lord as well. And I saw Lost Jedi with a channel membership. I thought you were already a member of Lost Jedi. I could have been wrong. But, uh I saw you pop up for a new member on there. So thank you very much. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Lost Jedi, one of my long time patrons. Um, Uncle Chunky Gaming for Canadian $5. If Naughty Dog hadn't lied about Joel and hadn't copyright struck channels, I would have bought the game despite the horrible story. What they did was evil. That is where a lot of people fall in. This is completely the Streisand effect. If... The leaks had come out. I made one or two videos about it. I probably probably would have fucking been it. And then they copyright struck my channel, not once, but twice. Almost terminated my fucking channel over false copyright strikes. That is when I made fuck Naughty Dog merch and bitched about this game for the next month and a half. Tried to warn people that didn't know about these leaks, what would happen. And it, you know, you should have listened. Um, if you do like the game, I'm glad. But for the most part, I think a lot of people are really disappointed. Uh, mm -hmm. And then Melissa Lord for two dollars drunk. Everyone is comparing Joel's death to Luke's thoughts. Well, Luke didn't die by the hand of a golf club, but uh, they both went out like they shouldn't have been. That's for sure. So it just it just took. I mean, it just took. Everybody was just like, "We love this character. Why would you?" Like that was supposed to be the edgy moment, you know. And Luke Skywalker's death was supposed to be the edgy moment of the series. Like, oh, wow, Luke. Oh, oh. Wow. Ray's going to have to do it all on her own. Yay. That's what we want to see. Yeah. Hey. Well, yeah. Lovely. I think like the deaths, it's not really about the deaths. It's about like the destruction of a character. Mm -hmm. You know, th that, that's what the comparison is. The deaths, um, they both did go out like a bitch. I, I agree, Darth Megatron. But the yeah, they deaths, did. like, Listen, if Joel would have died in this game in a different way, I, I don't think you'd have people complaining. People die all the fucking time in movies and games, and uh, it can be very uh, rewarding, for lack of a better term. And it doesn't mean that every fucking hero has to go out fucking guns blaze and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. But you need to make that death make sense. I feel like they wanted to kill him and then came up with a way to make it shocking as opposed to letting the story play out. You know, that, that's mm -hmm. how I feel about this game. Uh, Gary got copyright struck today. I haven't seen yeah. if it's a copyright strike or if it was a, uh, a copyright. He just said down. it was taken down. It, it yeah. says, uh, the image has copyright claim. Yeah, um, copyright claim. So that means it's blocked. Um, that will happen sometimes from place, things like Warner Brothers or HBO or BBC. I think it was BBC specifically yeah. for this one because it was a Doctor Who video. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I know, it's not a copyright strike. I hope it's not because that's fucking bullshit if it is. But uh, we'll have to get to the bottom of that. From what I understand, it was just a takedown, um, which is basically a copyright claim where they don't let anyone watch the video. Instead of taking all the money from the video, they just block mm -hmm. it completely. Um, Hurin, Hurin is steadfast. 10 Canadian dollars. Thank you so much, Hurin. I appreciate that. And going back to what you said about, you know, character deaths, it's like you've been saying, like I've been saying, like everybody else has been saying that we don't care about the fact that Joel necessarily died. It was how he died. It was for purely for shock value is purely just to push onto uh, gamers, a character that um, 
they don't know anything about and are forced to play as that character for 10 out half the game when we, they were told that Ellie was the only playable character. And then on top, and then on top of that, it's like, well, the manner of death, yes, it's revenge, but maybe if it had been later on in the game and he stay behind to maybe fight Abby. So, so Ellie could get away or something like that. And he was um, wounded from one of the infected or something like that, so he was weakened, maybe. But at least it would have been a sacrificial death. At least it would have been like within character from the first game, where he's his focus is protecting Ellie. His focus is saving Ellie. His daughter is like who he sees as a daughter, pretty much. And but to do to assassinate his character by doing a complete one eighty in terms of his um, first game, where he's very practical. He's not necessarily distrusting, but he's pregnant. He is. Yeah. He is distrusting as yeah. fuck. He sees someone, he sees someone in the fucking road that's pretending to be shot or hurt. Mm -hmm. And he stops like 50 meters away, tells Ellie to buckle up and just fucking floors it because he knows it's mm -hmm. a fucking trap. He said he ain't even hurt. Yeah. And he fucking runs that bitch over and gets the fuck mm -hmm. out of there because it's a trap. <laughs> Joel's very that. distrusting. Yeah. But to take that and have him like just, you know. I'm going to follow this group of people that I know nothing about to this mansion. I don't know where exactly it is with my brother and b give our names to these people. It's completely out of character. Out of character. Yeah. Yeah. Just like Luke out of character. Yeah. See, and this out is so Alex has been here. Alex is a big last of us two fan and that's fine. Not Joel needed to go out like a dog. The Last of Us world is not the MCU. Well, I fucking hate the MCU. Yeah. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I, I hate a lot of things about the MCU, about how lighthearted it is. Uh, I'm not saying that he doesn't have to go out, you know, uh, that it doesn't have to be fucking brutal. But they made him into a fucking retard. Uh, they, they made him do something completely out of character. Um, and it was all for shock value. That's the problem. That's the fucking problem uh, in my mind. Uh, but I did, I did pull up this... Uh, <laughs> The Last of Us 2 She-Hulk in action um, at the request of that super chat. So let, let's take a look at this. This looks like it's going to be pretty good. Oh, there's Abby's dad. <laughs> Hulk crush you! Smash you! Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's the cycle of revenge. Gamma Crush! Gamma Tsunami! Hulk is strongest there is! Leave Hulk alone! Look at that. God, it kind of does look like Abby, doesn't it? <laughs> Hulk no like fighting girls. <laughs> what the fuck? Martha! <laughs> Martha. <laughs> Listen to that. Hulk, help! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Thanks for the recommendation for a, for a laugh. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I got Dexter 86 for, uh, Norwegian Cronus, uh, uh, 199 or 109 of them. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you very much, Dexter. I appreciate the support and I appreciate that super chat, my man. Um, Curtis YZ for $5. I feel like it's not well known enough. Chris Avalon, Koto 2 writer is writing Dying Light 2. So I'm super hyped for that too. Plus already good game. I've heard some shit about Chris Avalon, uh, them trying to cancel him lately, um, so yeah, I, I've heard good things about Dying Light for sure. Heard very good things about Dying Light too. So we'll see what happens. That's an insult to the Hulk, says Chaos Horror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is insulting yeah. Hulk. Abby is uglier, says Lara Croft. See, even women don't like Abby. There it is. Mm -hmm. Um, according to Lara Croft, the Tomb Raider herself. The Tomb Raider herself. All right. Um, let me make sure refresh here. I don't want to miss anyone's super chats. That's the last thing I want to do. Um, boom, boom, boom. Got that one. All right. I am caught up. 
Um, now, in addition to The Last of Us 2, guys, we did have some other news this week. Uh, we did have some other news this week. Oh, Kevin says, thank you for helping me save the money for Days Gone 2. Are they making a Days Gone 2? I heard about that. If that's true, that's fucking awesome. Uh, I, I thought Days Gone was... I was ex I overhyped Days Gone. It was good. Um, but I, I, I thought it was... I had it so built up in my mind. But it was a really good game. Um, but anyway, but anyway, um, we had some other news this week too. Uh, Jay, did you hear about all this, all these DCEU rumors? I know you're an MCU guy, but we heard some pretty crazy rumors. The only one I heard was Michael Keaton. Yes. Michael Keaton. Um, Michael Keaton coming back to play Batman in the flash movie. Um, Pretty insane, if you ask me. I think it's a little far fetched. I do still think it's very much a rumor at this point. Um, but how would you feel about that? Him being in the same continuity as Batman eighty nine and Batman Returns. Him, you know, in this other multiverse, Earth eighty nine, playing his character. How would I feel about it? Yeah, I'm all for it. Make it happen. Then put him in a Batman Beyond film. Make it happen. I'm all for it. <laughs> That's so, what people are saying. <laughs> let it happen, man. Let it happen. That that uh, means he has a character in the MCU, and he's back in the DCEU, and you know, because well, I don't think he's I don't think he's done in the Marvel. I don't think he's done in the Spider Man series. I don't think he's done. Well, uh, he, in Marvel, he, you know, they set up the little uh, the little. They have him talking to Morbius in the Morbius. Yeah. Movie. So he's in Sony's Marvel Universe and he's in the MCU. Uh, but now, I mean, listen, if this happens, if he plays as his character, um, that means the DCEU technically started back in 1989. Um, so it started before the end. They started it. Uh, DC started it. Sorry, MCU. Uh, mm -hmm. DC started it, the connected universe. You just didn't know it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it but, would be kind of cool because maybe if they kind of keep his character as far as like where it progressed. Of course, I said that about Luke Skywalker. If they keep it where it, you know, maybe yeah. that <laughs> maybe it would be kind of cool to see. So, but I also like, yeah, someone in the chat mentioned Ben Affleck. That was trending not too long ago, too. Bat Fleck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, now, no one's really talking about the uh, Twilight Boy much uh, since his little workout, uh, his little workout debacle. They, they kind of are like, let's just move along. Let's just move along. It, they really need to start filming that. They really need to start filming that because it's lost a lot of the hype. Remember, like we kept getting like a set picture every, you know, every yeah. day we get something and be like, oh my god, look at the picture of this stunt man in this outfit on this yeah. motorcycle, and we'd all like analyze it. None of none of that now. Now everyone's talking about fucking DC EU, the Zack Snyder DC EU. Yeah. What about you, Mara? Uh, is that something you would want to see in the Flash movie? Would you want to see Mara? Mara's movie? easy to please. Let just so everyone knows, she's just gonna be. I like it. She's very easy to please. Right, oh Mara? Oh my god, you make me sound like I'm. <laughs> 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 but, um, but um, I've. I've kind of said this before where it's like I would um even I I was talking about this on um Geek Blend's channel last night uh during his uh, Raging Geek Jedi show and that is um where I would love to see Michael Keaton as uh uh older Batman uh, like you know uh Batman Beyond uh Batman um in the Flashpoint movie but uh, at the same time it's like um I'm a little bit apprehensive because one if they were to focus on that, then they would completely, um, not necessarily completely, but uh, they they wouldn't necessarily use the uh, Flashpoint storyline with Thomas Wayne Batman and Martha Wayne Joker, which is one of the Flashpoint stories. So I feel like if you have Michael Keaton in that movie, chances are it'll most likely be a cameo where Flash is going through these different multiverses, and that's one of the ones he um, comes across. Yeah. It's the 89 Batman. Still get me to go, yeah. see, yeah. still get me to go see the film. Yeah, well, well, that's also like a little bit of like ties into a little bit of apprehension. Is also is if they use him to, for the marketing when he's only in it for like a little bit of the film. 
sort of like, I don't, I'm worried that about possibly deceptive marketing in that regard. But at the same time, I'm like, um, as long as I see him, like I, that's all I care about. I want to see Michael Keaton as Batman again. Well, I think that, I think that what they would do if all these rumors were here interacting, what they want is for him to be on multiple fucking things, right? Mm -hmm. They yeah. want him to do this and then possibly lead into a Batman Beyond movie. So yeah. this would kind of be the introduction to him and his world. So it's not like a shock. And it also helps explain the multiverse. Yeah. Which could also help explain a lot of things going on in DC right now to introduce the the common movie going audience to you know uh, to the multiverse which for us that are fans of comics even jay who's a bigger marvel fan uh, i know like he still knows what the multiverse is so, but for most normal audiences that's not necessarily something that they might connect to so they said they want to do a different take on flashpoint this would be that different take Instead of creating an alternate reality by trying to speed through time, you could open the pathway to the multiverse. Mm -hmm. And they even introduced that concept in the Flash TV series when Grant Gustin and Ezra Miller met each other. So th that's kind of what I see this happening. For me, I would say that I, I would personally rather have the Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Thomas Wayne, more traditional version mm -hmm. of Flashpoint. I think that'd be fucking badass and dope. Um, I think that the Michael Keaton would be a little more of a um, kind of just, uh, hey, let's get this name. Kind of like you said, we'll talk about Ryan Reynolds in a second yeah. with that as well. So that to me is a little more shallow, but, mm -hmm. you know, eh, who knows? Man, I'm telling you, if they do it right, it could be awesome. Put Michael Keaton back in the bat, you, you know, the, and they show like pictures of him wearing it and stuff. Mm hmm. The no everyone will go see that film. People will just flock yeah. to see Michael Keaton in the cosplay. Even if it's for five minutes, I'm telling you, people will go see it. That's why I keep telling Sony, do a freaking Into the Spider-Verse. You got Tobey Maguire. You got all the actors that played Spider-Man. Throw them all together in a movie. Oh, my goodness. It would make a gazillion dollars. Everybody would go see. Everybody would love to see Tobey back in the yes. Spider-Man. You know, I mean, it's, it's yeah. set up perfectly. Their ages... You know, I mean, you can even add the Garfield guy. I mean, all those people yeah. you could throw in there, it would mm -hmm. make it would be awesome. That would take the hype away from what DCU yeah. is building right now because Marvel, the next phase of Marvel is kind of like, oh, it's basically yeah. like Endgame was over. I shut the book on MCU and it's just, I'm just going to wait and see because they're going to have Captain Marvel as, I guess, spearhead the next phase of, of this uh, Marvel. Uh, what is it? Phase four. <laughs> if they ever get to yeah, film anything, phase four. Phase, just, phase bore. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be yeah, a train wreck, man. Yeah, I don't have any issues with them, even for five minutes, having Michael Keaton as Batman, as long as they do so to set it up that maybe like we'll have a Batman Beyond film where it's like not so much like like a flyby cameo. Hey, you remember Keaton as Batman sort of approach? You remember him, nostalgia for nostalgia's sake. As long as they do that and say, um, in a way that uh, down the road we will see the Batman Beyond film, I'll be fine with that. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, FK, for $5, every time Ryan catches up with Super Chats, I'd be like, celebrate, party, celebrate. I don't know what, what? it is, but I'm glad to yeah. make you happy, AFK Bard. Was she throwing um, some bones today? I know. <laughs> Look at her. Hey, I'm so happy you're here. Um, she got her stimulus. <laughs> <laughs> AFK is awesome. Uh, yeah, she's 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 fantastic. She's fantastic. Um, Lost Jedi brings up a great point. Lost Jedi for five dollars. Shouldn't someone who lost their play parents play Batman? Hashtag orphan yeah. life matter. <laughs> oh, yes. Shit. Yeah. That is good. That totally is agree. Mm -hmm. um, totally yeah, agree. you have to. Only orphans. Uh, if you want this part, you're gonna have to kill your parents. That's 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 the bottom line, I believe. At this point in time. Uh, and then Septian Patterson for $2. Who's playing? Terry McGinnis. Um, now, it's this is all speculation. There's not anything has been cast, whatever. Um, and I haven't heard any rumors on who could play Terry. One popular uh, fan cast that I've seen, God, excuse me, would be, <laughs> would be Robbie Amell. Did you swallow blood there, brother? Did you like swallow no, I'm just I'm fucking hiccuping. <laughs> Uh, I was like, I thought you were about to do that cat throw up thing again. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, 
No, the I t- last drink I took, I swallowed some air with it, and I've fucking had the hiccups. Uh, but <laughs> Rob, Robbie Amell, who is Stephen Amell's cousin, who plays Firestorm in the DC uh, fl- Flash universe, or not Flash, the Arrowverse. Um, that's a popular one that I've heard. Uh, I'd, I'd be down with that. I could see him as Terry. But I know a lot of people would be really down for a, a Batman Beyond. Like I know this that. has nothing to do with nothing, but this is kind of funny. Did you hear, did you see that Cam Newton has signed a deal with the Patriots? What? Are you serious? Yeah, breaking news. Oh Cam Newton has signed a, a one year deal with the Patriots. All right. Well, I I'm sorry. I, I know this ain't sports talk, but I was kind of like, what the <laughs> twenty twenty man? What the heck is well, going? <laughs> thank you for letting me know because I'm gonna make a video of that right when we're done. So, um, Robbie and Mel's perfect. Well, I'm glad you like my fan cast. Except in um, means I did a good job. Uh, Ross Gecko for five dollars. Thank you, Ross. Hey, Ryan, big fan. Do you think Tim Burton would return to direct a Keaton verse Batman movie after Flash? Would you want that? Why or why not? Interesting. I don't think. I don't think that Michael Keaton should be playing Batman like Batman. He should be playing a fucking old Batman or like a Kingdom Come Batman or like a a Batman Beyond Batman. You know, where he is the mentor role. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't think it's realistic enough for him to be able to pull that off. I also don't think that Tim Burton's style works for current current day superhero movies. No, it um, doesn't. Do I think a lot of people would be interested to see it because of nostalgia? Yes, but I don't think that right now the current general movie going audience would be super receptive to that style. Now, if he can alter Bro, his style, maybe. No. But. Oh, I'm know. just saying, mm-hmm. you get him in a Batman Beyond and you just give him his like seven minute scene, you know, where he's got to become Batman just to help, you know, like uh, uh-huh. just give him his little old man scene where he could like, he could just beat a couple henchmen up, you know, and like save somebody. Like it would be, it would be perfect. It would be freaking perfect. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. I really like, like Tim Burton himself coming into direct, like no. As much as I love Tim Burton's style, I agree with you. Where I don't think it, within the current state of superhero films, um, particularly with the DCEU as we're talking about now, I don't think it would work. But I would like to see at least some nods to Tim Burton's style in the film because of the fact it's Michael Keaton come back and coming back to play Batman, and he's so. Whenever you think of. The Batman films, you also think of the Tim Burton style from 89 and 92. So I'm not saying this. So I think like yeah. a little bit of a nod here and there within like the, the style of the cinematography and things like that, I think could still work within the films. But that's just like yeah. my opinion since I like Tim Burton style. Well, I, can I can I share something real quick? So they um, the, I was at Universal's <clears throat> I was at Universal Studios and they had a um, they had a filming crew out there. Um, I guess I could share it, but anyway, this has nothing to do with it. They, they were filming a commercial for Halloween Horror Nights because they're going to try to get it done. And while we were there, we were talking to some of the people, and they were they were <laughs> saying because of what is going on in the world today. I don't with the uh, beer thing. Everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm. With the beer bug. Okay, that <laughs> the up and coming fight scenes will have to be more of a Black Panther, like how they did it in Black Panther style uh, until things are kind of cleared up. Is that, This is what one of the director people told me when we were able, um, when I was able to look on the set. Now, take it for whatever it's worth. Take it for whatever it's worth. Um, it, it's, as far as action fight scenes, it's going to mm-hmm. be pushed more CGI-ish than, than um, the people coming together. Which he said is gonna make it look like he goes. You remember the fight scene in Black Panther at the end? I was like, yeah, it was. Yeah, it looked like fucking PS2. It, it was. Yeah, it was terrible. He goes, yeah, you you might see a lot of that coming in the future because of some of the guidelines and restrictions that they're gonna be put. And I and I was like, really, really? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, they, they, there's already been things kind of passed down. I was like, man, that's that's gonna look terrible. He's that's like, crazy. it is what it is in the world we live in right now. So. It's crazy. It's literally. It's, oh my god. Take it for whatever it's worth. That's what it's they told stupid. me. I, I'm not in the industry. I don't yeah. know, but I'm it's just saying, stupid. like, that's what they were saying because even the stunt show, even the shows, you know, and stuff that that we saw uh, there, 
you know, people, they had to, it, it was weird. They had to do like this distancing thing and they literally had a guy fighting against uh, someone on a movie screen. Mm -hmm. God. Make it look like he was fighting someone like as, as part of the show. So, you know. <laughs> That's awful. It's it's like the article I, I shared not too long ago where of the um, room, like speculation going around that like sex scenes themselves would be CGI because of the uh, comic cop situation. I'm like, just take their temperatures, take a swab, wait a day, film the scene. Most people are not sick. If you want to take precautions, do that, but most people are not sick. And even if, even if they are, even if they do have it, they're not sick. Yeah, uh, because it's not that big a deal. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's ridiculous what we're doing right now for this. But uh, AK Champ for ninety nine cents mm -hmm. euros, I think that's what that is. Point nine nine euros. Thank you very much for the super chat. And then Josh Main. Josh is a new channel member. Thank you so much. Now you have access Fantastic. to the fuck naughty dog emotes uh, and everything else. So thank you so much, man. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. Um, all right. Now, uh, and then, you know, speaking of, like like we said, using these kind of names to bring them back in the DCU, we also heard this rumor about Ryan Reynolds in talks to come back as Green Lantern. And a lot of people think they're going to try to somehow shoe him into Zack Snyder's Justice League. No. I think that that is not, uh, I don't think that that's going to happen. And I think that's bullshit if it does happen. Mm -hmm. Um I listen. I had problems with the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie, like most people did. Of course, I did. even he had problems with yeah. it. That's one of my fucking problems. That's why I don't want Ryan Reynolds back as Green Lantern. To be quite honest with you, Ryan Reynolds has treated it like a fucking joke for the past seven, eight years. He's In all his Deadpool movies, it, fucking trolled everybody about it. Said, "Don't watch this movie." I, like he's literally made a joke of the character, so I don't necessarily want him back. I thought he was fine as Hal Jordan. Um, I don't, I don't think he quite captured what I feel Hal Jordan should be, but I thought he was fine. Um, I'd be interested in seeing him in the DCEU. What I don't want is them to kind of force him into the Snyder cut when they already have a Green Lantern. Sam Benjamin is Green Lantern in that movie. I don't know if he's going to be in the suit. I, no one's quite sure about that yet. But we know that Sam Benjamin was cast as Green Lantern and is in Zack Snyder's Justice League. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have to see how that plays out. For them to force what the Snyder Cut movement has always been, in my mind, has been about Zack's vision. This, Ryan Reynolds was never part of Zack's vision. And this has everything to me. It, it, it reeks of, let's get some name, more name recognition for this. And that's, I, I don't think Not only that, that, Disney is like, has cut Deadpool. You know, and and this could just be Ryan. Like, oh, someone someone said in the chat. Johnny said in the chat. It could be like the ultimate middle finger. You know, like I'm not waiting around. Like you don't want to do my movie, or you want me to make a PG de a PG Deadpool would be PG thirteen Deadpool does not work. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just not who it. Yeah, it's yeah. And it's the only way that I would, I mean, okay, one, I don't I don't believe that they'd be. Sh uh, you warning him into the Zack Snyder cut because like Brian said, they already have Sam Benjamin. Sam Benjamin filmed his scenes and we know that he is, well, like, you know, expecting you know, Hal Jordan. We don't know if we'll see him necessarily as Green Lantern necessarily, but he's in at least as Hal Jordan. And he's supposed to be one of the military guys in the scene where Cyborg is, um, that we saw in the trailer where he's telling like the one guy you should move situation. He's, I think he's at the scene where he's supposed to be. Um, and then, but if they want to do the ultimate FU to Marvel, they had the Flash movie with the Flashpoint. Then maybe I don't know, even as a cameo, have him have him come back as Green Lantern as Hal Jordan in another in the multiverse. Yeah, that that's what that's what I. If there's any validity to these rumors that they are possibly in discussions, I don't think it's for Zack Snyder's Justice League. If anything, I think it could be for a different project. Yeah, um, that's what I believe. And Tom says he doesn't believe the Ryan Reynolds news. And where did you hear they cut Deadpool? Um, I don't, I, I, I don't not they cut, cut Deadpool, but they're like not doing Deadpool three necessarily. Because I know like the creator of Deadpool is like pissed off 
what they were doing. Yeah, they, they declared Bell. Deadpool came yeah. in. It was like the, the the talks were stopped, and like mm-hmm. then they want to change it to like a PG move, PG thirteen, excuse me. And then um, so he's just like he's so aggravated with Disney mm-hmm. and what they want to do to this character because I can see it now, man. I can see it. I can see myself going to the Magic Kingdom. And having, you know, Deadpool is one of the little happy characters. Hey, everybody. You know, instead of swords, he's got little balloon animals because that's what, you know, Disney wants with all their characters. It's what they did with their Star Wars characters. And, uh, you know, so little kids can get in line with a Deadpool that probably has a giant head, you know, to make him look funny. And, uh, you know, everyone can get their picture taken with them. And that that will be that will be that. So. Does that not surprise anyone that that's where they're thinking? Then they could sell Deadpool shirts in their parks and they could sell this and they can do all that. Um, you know, it's all it's all a corporate thought process. And that's the problem is when you have these corporate, they just see things on paper. They don't understand the heart and the the, the understanding of the fans and things like that. they just don't understand it. So. Yeah. yeah and I, I have no interest in a PG-13 Deadpool. Uh, I don't think very many people do. Uh, I don't think Ryan Reynolds would want a PG-13 Deadpool either, but we'll see what happens going forward. I There's also the Green Lantern TV show on HBO Max, which is still in production hell right now. Um, of course, Jeff Johns is involved in that, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but we have to consider that as well and what they may be doing with that if that is going to be tied into Zack Snyder's universe. There's so many DCE rumors going around. I think they're very open to listen and talking to everybody at this point. Uh, I don't take this rumor seriously. Uh, yeah. I know that I know that Grace is very serious about it. But it I, is 2020. That's all I'm yeah. saying. It is 2020. <laughs> I, I would be pretty upset if it's for Zack Snyder's Justice League. So I, I hope that it doesn't it happen. The craziest um, things that happened in 2020. Why not add more to the fire? You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Uh, Ross Gecko for $5. Ryan, you have a lot of good ideas for movies and characters. Have you ever considered writing your own movie? Which DC? I can answer that. I can answer that. He will never do it because he's too lazy. So (laughs) that's where. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I'm just kidding, kidding, man. I'm just kidding. I, I, I am. Listen. Talking about something for two minutes, like uh, taking a look at something and then talking about it for two minutes and saying, I don't think this is what this character would do. This is what they probably should do is a lot different than writing a writing a movie. Um, I've never, ever tried anything like that. And I honestly think that at this point, it, I, I don't think I would be very good at it necessarily. Um, so it's not really something I've ever thought about it. Which DC character would I write uh, if I had the opportunity? Should do it, man. It'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Mara Jade. She'll be in her bikini. Everybody in the chat wants to see that. Um, I would rather do a Star Wars like expanded universe movie. I'd rather write something from like the New Jedi Order era uh, of of the expanded universe, Star Wars Legends, than uh, than like a DC character because I think I'd be I'd be better at doing the Star Wars. If I had a, my one of my favorite characters is Nightwing. Um, I feel like it would be fairly easy to write a nightwing story because he's pretty grounded um but yeah that, that's probably who i would do nightwing i think whatever dc character he'd write for he'd have captain boomerang in it somehow just so we can have the fucking boomerang line i could yeah we could yeah, do that right yeah could, i'll just do yeah i'll do flash I'll do there flash. you go you should just make like a whole new character like captain underpants you know like when that came out and just and do like a funny or was that captain underwear something like that I'm not Whatever creative that like that. Was. Yeah. I ain't creative like that. I don't know if I can do you that. You see, Mar didn't say no to the idea of being in your film wearing. That's all I'm saying. I mean, she <laughs> she wants she wants some royalty. Yeah, She's I want giggling. the royalty. That means yes. She's I giggling. Be rolling in every time this <laughs> it's aired. <so. laughs> I should I should be a super villain. I'd be good with that. Um, guys, I I want to I want to take an opportunity to shamelessly plug something. Uh, and that is the shirt that I'm wearing. Uh, the <laughs> fuck body dog merch. Um, uh, I thought he was going to pull up like Mars channel and everything. <laughs> I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that in a second. I'm going to do that in a second. Uh, you don't have to do that. <laughs> I will. But we do 
have the hoodie uh, multiple different colors we do have the shirts and uh you know just for abby it does come in unisex so no worries about that whatever your identity you can find a shirt that fits you we also have fuck naughty dog mugs and we have women's as well um so if you guys want a fuck naughty dog shirt um you definitely have the capability i'll go ahead and put it in the chat right now i see a couple of people saying they're getting one that is awesome guys um, let me, boom, put that in there. Alex says, I'd love to write a Red Hood film. That'd be fucking cool, actually. That'd be really uh, cool. But, uh, yeah, guys. I would want to do a Punisher. If I had a comic book character, I'd do a Punisher story. That'd be pretty cool. I, I'd be down. I like Punisher. Um, I've been watching Walking Dead, uh, and he has a he has a character in there. Um, the guy who played Punisher, uh, John Bernthal, has a character in the first couple seasons. Wait, what season are you on? I'm like on. I'm on season three. Oh, uh, okay. Well, we don't last all right, long. Don't last anything. Well, I, I already <laughs> saw that part. I mean, but I like his character. I feel. I feel like he got done dirty. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He did. There it is. Uh, last Lost Jedi says, "Fuck Naughty Dog. Fuck Naughty Dog. Fuck Naughty Dog." Well, thank you, Lost Jedi. I appreciate that. Um, but I should also take the opportunity, just like you said, Jay, to uh, plug these two amazing people on the panel. We'll start with the ladies. Uh, well, the lady, Mara. Tell <laughs> me about your channel and what they can find. Um, well, for my channel, I've um, I might get back into talking about Star Wars because I have been enjoying talking about the EU with the EU Book Club and um. Star Wars that I enjoy, but for now, um, at least up until the comic cough happened, I was talking about um, like mo uh, movie news, social commentary, things like that. So once productions pick up again for the new Batman film, uh, the closer we get to the Wonder Woman 84 film, I'll begin talking more about that stuff. But until then, it's more DC-related content right now that I've been handling uh, covering. I will say, Mara did a video on these voice actors, and I've never seen her so upset in a video, ever. Like, she got the high-pitched women voice going. Like, that's how upset <laughs> she was in that video. I was like, dang, she wasn't playing. That was very good. Thank you. I was, I was highly impressed. Yeah, I, I do uh, a number of social commentary, so whenever I see stupidity i always generally give my two cents and sometimes that means a little bit of rage every now and then mara is also featured naked on my streams on monday nights um monday That's nights true. i have many ladies of the phantom menace and she happens to be one of them i i i don't know why she doesn't wear a shirt but is she just I don't we're know why we're getting like a heat wave up in here in the northeast so it's a little, a little too hot right now <laughs> It's getting warm for me. It's hot as fuck wearing the sweatshirt, but I don't give a I don't give a fuck. It's working well. People are enjoying it. People are getting triggered by the merch. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah, they are. That one tweet just had me laughing. I was like, they had the nerd. It's like they waited to pause your face at like <laughs> while you were yelling, just so they could make fun of the way you look. And I was just like, oh. yeah, that's you can't get any lower than that. I'm sorry if you, when you when you you've lost an argument when you got to attack people's, um, you know. The way they look, especially when you pause it in the, in the middle of talking, because you know I'm chewing on gum. People could pause it anywhere, and it'll make my exactly. face look all, you know. It's just yeah. like, and then be like, "Oh, look at this guy." So, well, and like you, know. you even you have a fucking sticker of me on your channel when I'm like <laughs> paused, when I'm paused like this. <laughs> he calls it stroke face. It's like stroke face <laughs> because wow. you said that on our show. Well, yeah, you I said it someone caught face. me in a stroke face moment. I couldn't, dude. I almost pee. I laughed so freaking hard, <laughs> my stomach hurt, and everyone started like saying that. I was like, I gotta, I gotta capitalize on this opportunity, so I put it in my Twitch channel. So people are paying me money, Ryan. They're paying me money to see your stroke face on my Twitch channel. So I greatly appreciate it. So mm -hmm. thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. But yeah, so like when, when we're doing our videos, like anybody in the midst of them talking makes weird fucking faces. And I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it did. It looked like I had no teeth because I was just like this. You were yelling. You were like, I was like, yeah. I looked like I had no teeth. And someone's like, it looks like he got so mad at Naughty Dog, he punched his teeth out. And I was like, yeah, I, yeah, I, I have no teeth. Got me. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, Ross Gecko for two dollars. Uh, who do you guys think will win, Trump or Biden? Uh, God, God help us come November. Uh, but um, I, <laughs> if, if I was a betting man, I I think that uh, I would bet on the incumbent. I would bet on Trump. But uh, the polls aren't looking too good. But they weren't looking too good last time either. I don't really get into politics or who I vote for or any of that shit. But uh, not looking. I just want to watch the debates. I just want to see the debates. I think that would be kind of funny. Yeah, especially since I they don't. Were think they were funny for me last, last, time. last time around. Biden doesn't even remember who he is half the time, so it's like I'm, I'm waiting for those debates. Yeah. Oh, and we've got a new member as well, Judson Co. Judson Co. just became a YouTube member. You now have access to those exclusive emotes uh, and also the same perks uh, that patrons get with some some videos during the week and some exclusive live streams. So thank you so much. Uh, Judson, appreciate you becoming a member. That is awesome. I think you're the 30th member I have. So I believe that's the case. I'll have to check. But uh, thank you guys so much for all the support today. Um, oh, you know what? I'm also going to plug one thing too while you guys are still here. My live channel where all of these live streams get re-uploaded um, in their entirety. Because I unlist them here on the channel because it's not really good for the algorithm. I don't private it or anything so you can still look at the link. But I also upload all of them on this channel here, which is RK Outpost Live, um, which is where I do all of my stuff. Boom, right there. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and subscribe there if you guys want to as well, so you can catch up on these. Um, I put the RK3PO show up there as well. I think we're gonna do another one this Thursday, so that should be fucking good. I have no yeah. lack of comments, of hate comments to read after my- You got a lot more than I do. God. Um, so we will definitely see. But um, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you to my guest, Mara and Drunk. You guys were awesome. Thanks for being here and having fun. Thanks for the great turnout today. Uh, over 700 people at one point. Yeah, that, was, um, that was beautiful. Uh, fucking crazy. But I, you guys up I saw the link. I was like, oh, man, he's just hanging out. 700 <laughs> people later, I was like, oh, yeah. I'm, glad I had I'm glad I had a shirt on. That was like the, you know. Oh, yes. <laughs> Bowsette, Bowsette bought the shirts. Thank you, Bowsette. I appreciate nice. you. I appreciate you, Bowsette, for buying the fuck Naughty Dog merch. Uh, Ryan will be at 20K that. by the end of the week. Don't worry, Peter. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to be there, Peter. Um, I was also going to say one more thing. Oh, uh, for patrons, patrons and channel members, if you are not in the Discord already, go ahead, go ahead and join the Discord. The link is in the description of this video. You can get in the Discord. I will set your tier. Just remind me. And you can join the supporter chat after the stream. That will uh, give me about 15 minutes after the stream because I need to make a video about Cam Newton first. Um, but I will be there, and then I'll be on Mario Kart tonight. So thank you all for being here. Jay is awesome. Mara is awesome. I will talk to you next time. Mm -hmm. Peace. Later. <laughs>